held. Again, this talk is part of a named lectureship that I've held in California, um, bestowed by the California Groundwater Resources Association, and it's the David Keith Todd Lecture. Here, I'm only going to give basically a summary of the lecture, and just kind of um, hit the main points of, of the, the story. Y les voy a dar los puntos claves de la historia so, que platico oops, en este sure. seminario. There we go. So, uh, oops. Vamos a empezar. The outline, um, este climate el... change challenges, I won't Algunos go into those de... very much in order to save time. Climático. I'll talk about a case study that Hablaré I think is interesting about recharging estudio. floodwaters in, in uh, California and the American Cosumnes Basin. And I'll, I'll say a little bit about a roadmap to resiliency. In the full talk, I give a roadmap or part of one. In this talk, I'm just going to focus on one part of the roadmap, and that's um, tracking uh, um, groundwater storage, which I'm going to argue is key to making groundwater management easier. <clears throat> The work um, uh, comes from the, the contributions of many, many people, um, and including Sam, who's here. Uh, much of this work was done through the UC Water Security and Sustainability Research Initiative. Um, which, uh, was also UC one Water of the, Security. the reasons I was in Chile two years ago and before, and the UC Agricultural and Natural Resources dos años uh, um, fue para compartir estas uh, unit in the University of California. Uh -huh. But the work is is the contributions of a number of, of people um, <coughs> and uh, students and, and postdocs. So just a brief support. introduction to California. Of course, it has many similarities with, with Chile. The major stores of water in California are, are snowpack, as similar to your Andes, our Sierra Nevada snowpack is important. There is mountain groundwater, it's not, the aquifers are not as prolific. Surface reservoirs and alluvial valley groundwater reservoirs, and the big one is the Central Valley of California, right here in the middle. And I like to remind people that 97% of all liquid fresh water on Earth is in groundwater. So the biggest reservoir is almost always the groundwater. Reservoir. El, with, el, with very few assumptions, the groundwater reservoir is the biggest, even in small basins. <clears throat> and, uh, so, um, uh, and some more storage in, numbers in for California and uh, the, the Central Valley. The key numbers, and these are in million estos son, acre feet. Estos son los numeros, one million acre feet eh, is, is 1.2 cubic kilometers. Ajá, Apologies eh, bases. for the la units. Estos the están snowpack, en de aquí, historically, we can count on 17 million acre feet. Surface si reservoirs si in the entire state, 42 million acre feet. And um, these are summarized eh, over here. So 42 million <clears throat> And in the Central Valley subsurface, there's room for another 140 million acres. So the big reservoir uh, um, and the big opportunity for storing more water in California, and this is true of most places in the world, is in the groundwater. So part of the problem is how to do this effectively and how to use the groundwater system more effectively than we have in, in the past. And the, I won't say much about climate change, but I just will say in the context of these these water storage numbers, what climate change is doing to water management and storage in California is making the storage of water in surface reservoirs much more difficult. Es, nos está and el there's several de reasons los, for that. De las de I've covered them before in talks in, in Chile and elsewhere, but I, I don't have time to go into them here. But I'll just repeat. <clears throat> the problem with climate change is it, it makes storage of water es que hace que uh, in surface reservoirs much more difficult and much less difícil. effective than es used mucho to be, menos which um, brings up the, the opportunity and the need 
Creo que no estoy a hacer una oportunidad de ver la necesidad de almacenar más agua en los acuíferos con las aguas subterráneas. Very quickly, now a Voy a study of, of what we call in California eh, flood mar. So flood managed aquifer for recharge. Voy a this is este caso de high que en la cuenca del América. Es un caso de que fueron basin, which is near UC con Davis, todas para, inund east para inundación. Este es una cuenca cerca de esta cuenca. Uh, y este basin, es, um, esta es una here, foto de la presa. Yeah. And that reservoir is right here. Ese, esa presa está ubicada Sacramento aquí. Is here. Davis Sacramento is está aquí. Here to Sacramento. The west. Davis está por aquí. UC Davis. And este this UC Davis. Is located in the Central Valley. Y este right está so lo, 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 eh, ubicado en la parte del, del Valley, Valley, de the California. Part of the Esta es la Sierra parte Nevada. montañosa de la cuenca donde está la Sierra Nevada. Is, uh, right here. And, uh, the, the tan is the groundwater. Eh, ajá, este, este, esta región eh, es la parte del agua subterránea. Ese es el río americano y el río Este, eh, esta presa tiene un millón de kilómetros de agua. En este momento, está básicamente en otro año de sequía. And that is what we have found is that the, the water security provided by es que reservoirs like this, <clears throat> if we have a drought longer than two or three years, um, el, el the water el, security el, offered by these reservoirs el, is not very good, not very promising. <clears throat> Pero con el cambio climático so, no está siendo I, I tan, to people, eh, well, tan if you could have another Folsom Lake, Ustedes if pueden you have tener way otra presa de, de tamaño de Folsom Lake, que es de un millón de acres pie, the cost of the dam, Ajá, sin, sin el costo de construir la presa y Would sin los eh, daños de almacenamiento eh, and I say, well, the, the answer could be in using this reservoir because in this reservoir right here, just this part of it that I'm circling between these two rivers, mm -hmm. there's at least as much uh, additional room for additional water storage as is in the entire uh, Folsom Lake. So that's what hey, this is Graham, about. Just really. give, give me a, uh, just one minute. I'll, I'll come back to explain to tell you when, when to keep them. Um, lo que estaba explicando Graham es que qué pasaría si ustedes si les dijeran que pueden tener otro almacenamiento del tamaño de Folsom Lake sin los daños ambientales y sin el costo de construir la presa. Y lo que él está diciendo en esa donde está su, la flecha es que eh, en ese lugar existe la capacidad de almacenar el mismo volumen de la presa superficial, pero en la parte de las, de las aguas subterráneas ahí donde él está almacenando. Ok, now we're good. Keep going. Ok, sorry for going a little too fast there, Sam. No. That's so, okay, but I think, uh, no, you're, you're a good pace. Uh, it was just that I, I wanted to make sure what you were saying. So then, keep it going. The next part, Sam, is going to go quickly because I'm not que, going to cover que, what's que in these slides, but just to say the study looked at reoperating the surface reservoir para with groundwater recharge as an objective. Also. And Sam Sandoval and Irfan Goharian were, y, were a, a big eh, part of, of that work. We also did work on exploiting the geology of the basin for maximizing recharge rates and volumes. Um, and this involved advanced modeling with advanced uh, characterization and modeling methods. So I'm not going to go into them. But we might get a flavor for them by looking at these slides. We learned a lot about eh, básicamente se encuentran lugares en los cuales se puede hacer una recarga con eh, una infiltración de mayor velocidad que por sediments. And then we also investigated reoperating not only the surface reservoir, but also the groundwater no solamente de presas de agua superficial, pero también de and, uh, eh, la reoperación de sistemas de agua subterránea. Also, um, modeling Esto también incluyó la modelación 
eh, la recarga de agua en tierras agrícolas y, y donde eh, estratégicamente estábamos pensando hacer esta recarga de aguas basado también en una optimización económica. Encontramos ciertos lugares claves donde se podría hacer esta recarga. The numbers came from these advanced modeling. Y los números vinieron de este, de esta modelación avanzada. Lo que les voy a mostrar. Si nosotros derivamos el agua que lo ponemos en el agua, cuánta agua se puede recargar en el agua. ¿Qué es lo que ¿Qué cantidad de agua se puede recargar? ¿Y qué hubiera pasado si hubiéramos hecho esto? Ajá. ¿Hubiéramos derivado más de estas aguas durante las aguas de alta magnitud de las aguas de alta magnitud para recargar en estas condiciones de invierno? ¿Qué cantidad hubiéramos podido almacenar? Y esto solamente es un número de aguas de Through reservoir reoperation and high magnitude flow diversions, uh, diversions that did not violate environmental flow needs eh, in the basin. Que se puede recargar por año de medio a million acres per year during this time period. Sin eh, impactar al medio ambiente. And then the the hydroeconomic modeling predictions si for the 20 year period that we re-ran para ese periodo de años uh, indicates we could use 36 percent of that more water available to recharge 36% de ese que es el 0.52 millones. Si hubieran podido recargar 3.6 millones de acres en ese periodo, de eso se hubiera podido, recargar, se hubiera podido almacenar en el, en el acuífero 2.4 millones. Si hubiera incrementado el flujo de 7 millones de acres pie, y se hubiera ido a otras cuencas de aguas subterráneas eh, cercanas, 0.76. Si hubiéramos no solamente hecho la modelación hidroeconómica, pero también considerar la energía, se hubiera podido recargar en el acuífero 5.4 millones de hectáreas. Ajá, el balance de aguas subterráneas es de 2 millones de hectáreas. Estamos hablando de 1 a 2 millones de acres pie por año. California ha hecho 1 a 2 millones de acres pie por año de sobrecarga. Estas cantidades de recarga, estas, estas cantidades son eh, significativas en el, en el contexto del Estado. Of the surface reservoirs and the groundwater reservoirs to maximize storage in el acuífero y el agua superficial y que se rodee de agua superficial para incrementar el almacenamiento en el acuífero. ¿Cuáles son los beneficios de los beneficios de total water storage? En general, tienes un mayor almacenamiento en la cuenca, tienes mayor seguridad hídrica y menor sobrecarga. Hay, mucho, hay, hay muchos problemas con eh, pozos someros en estas comunidades en las que afectan el orden de miles que se afectan a estas comunidades 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 la calidad del agua subterránea en esta zona ha ido degradando debido a, eh, a los fertilizantes y es un problema con esta recarga minimizada. Uno se puede preguntar como civilización por qué tenemos tanta fijación en los almacenamientos de agua superficial. 
It has the biggest potential por, for storing more water. Why is this usually our answer en to water storage la mayor in the world? Mm -hmm. en las aguas I think the answer is what Yo answer is. La, for centuries, es, it's been the only obvious choice. Por, for centuries, people didn't know much about groundwater except people maybe no taking water from the spring um, or, and, or a, a, water, a groundwater fed lake. Also, eh, no modern groundwater technology and science is young. So civilization evolved over centuries basically uh -huh. doing this, but we got better and better at it with building bigger structures. To, with bigger uh, uh, civil engineering projects. Pero la the other thing de to think about here is the technology to operate aquifer systems like reservoirs is, is even younger. Uh -huh. It's la, only decades old. So what I'm saying here is, si fueran, eh, one of the reasons we de de like to store water on the surface is it's easier. Agua en el agua it's es easy. You build a structure, and there's the water. The, you have one water level to measure here as it goes up and down. You know exactly how much water you have. It's easy. How could you... So the question I'd like to pose is how could you make groundwater management as easy as managing the surface reservoir? And one of the answers to that is to use, make better use of technology to operate the aquifer systems like reservoirs. But the technology to do that is, is relatively young. We can do it, but we don't do it very much, really. So, um, and I'd, I'd like to to Así suggest que, one potential avenue yo les of, of effort in, in that direction. Un, una de cómo so, ir en, um, hacia so here we, I get into the, this issue of groundwater es, es, stress. Um, and the point of this is de agua super, uh, de groundwater stress, or you could replace stress with groundwater mismanagement, Ustedes pueden, is a global uh, phenomenon. La parte de stress con un mal I think um, not eh, so much in Chile. De de en, en Chile, you do have some acute groundwater en, problems. En Chile but problemas in many de, parts of the world, there's major um, disasters or crises These regarding groundwater, whether it's Western Mexico, the high plains of the U.S., mayor, the Central Valley of California right there. The North Central Arabian Basin, California, Persian, Lugalala, Persian Basin, the Upper Ganges, Lugalala, uh, North China Plain. Persa, los, We're seeing uh, more and more news articles and science China. articles. This was published in Nature Estamos about the global más, groundwater crisis. Uh, and some crisis, a crisis of global lack of management. And you know, why management. is there such qué? pervasive lack of groundwater management? ¿Por qué esta so I'm de, arguing eh, de no that, los de forma that the aquifers are not transparent. Porque los aquíferos no son transparentes. Son no so I think hacemos más transparentes. You know, the, the mismanagement comes el from the fact that groundwater is hidden. Viene porque and what's el agua happening with it at any given time is not widely known. Pero no people. está conocido de forma the people who are the wells, eh, popular the o de, who are de trying forma to masiva. use the water and the people who are trying to manage the water. The state of the groundwater systems, these groundwater systems, how did they get so depleted over the last, you know, ¿Cómo? four ¿Cómo to five dejan? decades? ¿Cómo se tienen estos well, sistemas I think de they were largely out of sight. Degradados out of I think part of the problem that, no se ve that we need to address no, no, no se is how to make aquifers more transparent. Plato. So uh, I ask you to step back and imagine. Imagine this. Imagine being able to know and manage a groundwater system as easily as we do a surface reservoir. And I list two key things that I think would make a big difference. Imagine knowing the change in groundwater storage monthly or weekly in real time. And this is not this is not the same as knowing the groundwater pumping. The key thing is the change in groundwater storage, which is a function of the pumping 
and recharge and lateral base and flows es, es and other things as well. So de... imagine knowing the change in groundwater storage monthly, the way Imagínese we do with surface de... reservoirs. Again, with surface reservoirs, it's Con simple. Reservorios with groundwater reservoirs, it is not Con, simple. Uh, it's uso. not simple at all. But it's no technologically feasible to do this. Ahora ya and then another bullet I have that I'm hacer. not going into today is imagine Imagínense knowing the flux exchanges, the water exchanges between groundwater and surface water de continuously in space and time. De this forma is a technological hurdle eh, that I'm predicting will be solved within five to ten years. Estos dos, so I think eh, this will, will have, have a big change. I'm not going to talk about it here, but I just I mention it because I think in the future no, no, no this will be very este. important. And then another one here that's important that I don't go into today is knowing the groundwater quality decades to centuries into the future based on different groundwater Ajá. quantity and quality management practices. This is something we need. We largely don't have that knowledge. The groundwater quality changes on these long time scales, and we frankly don't know what much of the groundwater quality will be 20, 30, or 50, or 100 years into the future. That's a problem, but that's something we can solve also. And that's something we're actually working on. So, es game-changing innovations within REACH. Algo que está I'm going to focus on the ones in bold up here. Real-time monitoring of changes in groundwater storage. Estamos, eh, Again, I think there's the common assumption that well, can't we already do this? And I'm going to argue in some places, yes, in very simple groundwater basins, we can. In, but for the most part, we're not doing it. Um, and it really hasn't been done that much. Pero no and the, there's two relatively simple um, actions in this that I think would, would achieve what we want to. Wireless sensor para, networks and well water eh, level pressure transducers. You guys in Chile and Aconcagua and many other places are doing this already. Remotas, eh, and, uh, this is something that is not being para done medir that, la uh, Carlos Flores and I have been working on producers. in a paper. But the use of calibrated groundwater models to develop También a proxy model to calculate change in storage. In other models, words, eh, develop your model para of your base and the Aconcagua has a model model that's in development. <clears throat> If you develop the model and calibrate it well enough, what people aren't really um, this, this realizing yet is you can use the model as a filter to translate measured changes in groundwater levels into changes in groundwater storage. So I'm going to say a little bit more about this and, and what I mean. And there's these other other bullets too that are important that I don't go into. So monitoring changes in groundwater storage in real time. So this, you might think, oh, can't we do that with satellites? Well, yes and no. You may have heard the grace satellite estimates of water storage change um, and uh, this is a figure from Famiglietti's famous science article published in 2014 which showed us that the gray satellite methods can give us changes in total water storage in years between 2011 and 2013 for California and the western U.S. Um, this got people very excited. Esto nos, nos, in fact, esto mucha in California, muy, muy hy hydrologists knew the water was in a deficit. The groundwater was being overdrafted severely eh, and was being affected by drought. But when politicians saw this, Pero los they said, oh, esto, we're in a crisis. Dijeron, sí, en una the hydrologists crisis. knew they were in a crisis, los... but when the politicians saw this, <laughs> So this is very effective. The problem with it is it's 400 kilometer scale resolution. So the scale is too big to represent the actual change in storage um, in a managed 
uh, watershed, like that American Cosimnus watershed. It's too big. <clears throat> the technology <inaudible> to refine <inaudible> the scale, <inaudible> scale at which GRACE operates <inaudible> is probably 20 years off. <inaudible> it, it may happen. But it's, it's not here now. But what, what I felt was very interesting about this is when people realize that you might have a method like this to monitor changes in water storage, groundwater storage in real time, people got excited. Why? Because this was the first case of the, the notion of a method that could be used to to monitor change in storage in real time. And it made me realize well, that's what we should be doing. But we can do it using conventional methods. And the, the method that I um, am going to suggest we can use is groundwater level monitoring, but groundwater levels don't correlate in a simple way to change in storage. I think many in hydrology assume all you need is the groundwater levels, and that tells you the storage. No. In some cases, yes, but in most cases, no. And I'm going to show an example of that from a site in Northern California right here. We have at these sites uh, multi-level monitoring wells. And at this site right here, um, right here we have um, well hydrograph measurements. So this is groundwater elevations versus time. And there's uh, about four or five years. Four years. Here. And um, the the measure sí. the well screens are run from estos, shallow estos son las, so the red eh, is a shallow well to a deeper postos, well one b ah, deeper eh, and deeper eh, so más profundo, most más of the rest of these measurements eh, are deeper desde in the somers hasta intermedios y profundos so um and at this point i want este to momento, switch quiero cambiar to a whiteboard so ah, i'm going con, to um, eh, I'm going to try and do that como we'll si fuera un works. pizarrón it worked for me when I tried it earlier. Okay. Okay. Ahora. So I'm, I'm here and I can write on this. <clears throat> so what we what we have here is we have a, a well drilled into the subsurface. And in that well were placed um, piezometers. Vamos a poner so piezometer. inside that well, Adentro there's de a well pozo. screen there, eh, and then there's another pipe that goes deeper pozo. with a well screen there, and then another y one otra with a well screen that's deeper. So the, the wells Estamos, go progressively los deeper, pozos so they represent water levels <coughs> deeper in the system. Profundo. This one right here este is that one, es el which is this, pozo más somero, que es la this one roja. right here. So that's the water table. Ese es la altura de la napa, la altura del nivel de agua espiática. That's the water table one. Esa es la napa. The rest of these, um, el resto de estos, the these uh, water levels that are deeper, that represent this part of the system, are not the water profundos. table. If we know the water table and that's the only groundwater surface in the system, it is simple. But in most of these basins, sedimentary basins like the Central Valley, Chile, California, the Yucatan, there are confining layers. So these these down here represent a semi-confined. Que pueden ser acuíferos semi-confinados. Y eso sucede en el Valle Central y en otras so, valles en California. And these are at the same location, right? So you've got, you've got the water table there and you've got these deeper water levels here. El, so you aquí, might say, tenemos, well, eh, this means una, that the water aquí. storage represented down here, this is a much greater change in water energy or water Esto surface elevation que, than eh, up here at the water aquí, table. So, which which of these has greater change in water storage? ¿Cuál de estos tiene mayor this here, almacenamiento? Or this one nos, down nos here. Un mayor the casual observer will say, well, 
This represents greater change in water storage. Esto, esto es and this is smaller. Los niveles, but that's exactly wrong. En el, en el the greater crecimiento. change in water storage is the part with the smaller change in head. Why is Pero that? Well, that's just because of the, the hydrodynamics of the groundwater system. So I'm going to stop this here and go back to the Lo que pasa es que existen distintas hidrodinámicas en los acuíferos semiconfinados que confinados. Pues el acuífero somero de los acuíferos. Okay. So the point of this is. El punto de esto es. Yes, groundwater levels are a key thing that we can use to understand what's happening. But the relationship between the change in groundwater levels and the change in storage is not simple. And I could lecture for two hours about what goes on inside the aquifer system, the aquifer mechanics that causes that. But this kind of response between shallow water table and deep water levels, we see all over the place, all over the world. It's not just in California. So, but the data we have that is Los most telling of what's dicen. going on in the groundwater system are the groundwater levels. So how do we use this, these data? How do we use data like this to calculate the change in groundwater storage? And the answer, and I just tried to advance the slide. There we go. The answer I'm suggesting is this. It's relatively simple. La and I think people have done it, eh, but not really published it. We use a calibrated groundwater model to account for the full dynamics of the pumpage, recharge, and vertical leakage effects las, between eh, the aquifer zones and develop a relationship using that model recarga, between change in head eh, and change in groundwater storage. Um, and We've shown that this is feasible and we're working on the paper. The we I'm talking about here is, is Dr. Carlos Flores. So here's an example of this. And this is from, uh, these are model results from a model in the Davis area of Yolo County. The model has three layers, shallow, intermediate, and deep. And um, what you're seeing here are model results. So we have, um, on the left here, these are simulated heads, groundwater las, levels eh, by the model. And masa this is over a, you know, a multi-decadal time period. Y you son, see the annual escalan, uh, perennial eh, fluctuations eh, in water levels. This column is change in bed for a sub-region of the model. De, this is about a, um, about a 300 square kilometer sub-region within son, the model. Son, eh, and this is change in storage. Delta VS is change in groundwater este storage. De and de and de again, terreno. you could approximate this if Ustedes all you knew was este. the groundwater pumping changes. El, but um, el, that only gives you part of the change in storage. What you really want, if you want to know the state of the groundwater system, you need to know the net consequences of pumping and recharge Tienen and other fluxes that are going on the system. So we para take todo these el, two para todo el and acuse. just cross plot them. Ustedes pongan Very simple. Dos variables, and in the future, sencillo, machine learning will be used en el futuro, to, to make this eh, much more automatic eh, and robust. Uh, that's something that is ongoing too. You plot these two against each other, and here's the kind of thing you get. This is for the shallow aquifer. You get your empirical relationship based on the model that includes the full dynamics of the system, uh, the relationship between change in head and water levels and change in state. Here's another example for the deep aquifer that comes from, from that model. If the model is not calibrated very well, then these are not worth the paper they're printed on. So the model um, needs to be calibrated and it needs to be a, a fairly reliable model. Many of them are not really calibrated well enough to do this, but this can provide additional incentive to make the models reliable and more robust. So um, that's the that's the concept. Yes. Give me one minute here. Okay. Lo que lo que Graham les quería decir o lo que les quiere decir es que 
eh, eh, una de las formas en las cuales se pueden hacer estas relaciones de cambio de NAPA con volumen es mediante el monitoreo del cambio de la, de la elevación de la NAPA y utilizar eh, modelos eh, de aguas subterráneas para, para estimar ese cambio de volumen. Entonces, con el modelo ustedes estiman el cambio de volumen con el monitoreo ustedes estiman el cambio de la, de la elevación de la NAPA y cuando el modelo está lo suficientemente bien calibrado y es confiable, pueden obtener estas relaciones, que son prácticas para que se pueda utilizar estos cambios de, de volumen para hacer un manejo adecuado de la, del agua subterránea. Um, ok, now we're good. Sorry. Ok, thank you, Sam. I hope you made it sound better than I did. I'm sure you did. Um, so the other part of La this is um, groundwater monitoring. Es el And we're, I'm interested in seeing um, this en kind of analysis este tipo and de the tracking of changes in groundwater storage del spread everywhere that de people are using groundwater. <clears throat> So we, 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 my students and I have been working on uh, a low-cost, open-source, wireless sensor network for real-time, scalable groundwater monitoring. We just published this in water um, late last year. And all this is, and I think you all are doing a fair amount of this already. And we, we built a, a sample pilot groundwater observatory where we have wells that we have of control over in this basin. And um, we install pressure transducers and um, cellular modems in each well. The cellular signal is good enough, and in most countries, um, the cellular, cellular signal is better than in the U.S. Actually. Um, so this is a, a really viable way to create a, a wireless sensor network relatively una, inexpensively. Una forma the idea is we want este, to be able esta, to get este more or less real-time feedback de forma de what are the groundwater level changes. Then we can use donde se, donde se the proxy modeling de, method de, that I showed previously to translate the changes in groundwater levels into changes in storage. Se This pueden, part here that I'm showing is just about the network, just to show you an example of what we've done. Hacer, and eh, what we've done and created is um, the, the student who es, did a lot of this work, Andrew Calderwood and Rich Blue, created um, our scripts and um, the resources to create your own uh, dashboard, web-based dashboard. Crear su propia, you, can, eh, you can pay people to do this for you. There, there are vendors, there are businesses donde ustedes, donde ustedes selling this kind of thing. What we're offering is um, capability to do this for free. Basically. Not entirely for free. It, it requires some staff staff support. But here's an example of a part of our network. It's groundwater monitoring in a floodplain. And here's the continuously recorded uh, changes in groundwater levels in that system from a period of different years. I'm not going to demonstrate the website, but it's it's a very interactive website where you can rescale the plots for different time scales and, and at different uh, magnitudes of groundwater Here's the, the flow chart of what's going on. We're monitoring groundwater levels. We have cellular modems at each well. And again, I think, I think you all are probably doing something like this. <clears throat> The data goes to, um, to the network. It goes on to a server. <clears throat> we have an SQL database on a local server. And we uh, have local data processing with our scripts that we provide. Um, all, everything that we do here in terms of the software and web development is available at this website right here. And Rich Palu, um, who created this, is more than enthusiastic to talk to anyone who's interested in this and, and taking it and applying it. <clears throat> the data then go to the cloud and then gets cleaned up further um, and served on the, the server, which gives you the kinds of plots that I just showed you. And you. So the idea is you can look at this in real time. We haven't then taken the data yet and translated it 
into change in storage. But that's the idea. Todos estos datos, al final, the people no actually este knew the change in, in groundwater storage in their system, it connects them instantly more closely to their groundwater basin that previously has been non-transparent. And again, I think this would be a major game changer in um, how people are able to be more effective at um, monitoring and managing their groundwater systems. And it would make um, the management of groundwater reservoirs more light or maybe almost as easy as managing a surface reservoir. Esto lo que so, puede hacer es hacer que la gente vea que es tan fácil um, hacer el monitoreo here, de aguas subterráneas tan fácil como el monitoreo de um, eh, reservorios de con este tipo de sistemas de monitoreo. En el caso de la estudio que showed, we, we showed eh, you could get up to 270,000 water storage. En el sistema de la Mediterránea additional water security. Esa es la and, de agua and again, I didn't go into it, año, but this benefits the groundwater hidrica. quality also. Puede it may be the only way to prevent the multi-decadal century timescale decline in groundwater quality in agricultural basins in California. Second part of it, um, of the talk, key emerging and future technological developments that make aquifers more transparent es que eh, estas tecnologías emergentes eh, van a ayudar a hacer el manejo so, de aguas subterráneas o de acuíferos más transparentes. Maybe that sounds crazy, mm. but I think it's not crazy. I think um, Creo que se puede, we need to puede, put puede significant effort into this. Much of what we uh, need to do can be done right away if we focus on, on this. <clears throat> but we're, we're so used to just putting wells in, maybe measuring water levels, um, maybe measuring pumping or not, and then just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, as we say sometimes, in, in US, and uh, not really managing the system to the full extent that technology should allow us to. So under that real-time accounting of changes in groundwater storage, lo que hacer es que key, tener una and then semi-continuous space-time accounting of groundwater surface water, water exchange, I did not cover that, but that's, no, that's no, another no, part no of my este tema, pero se puede hacer Todd, una, una contabilidad and then groundwater con, quality management modeling, eh, forma temporal y again, that's a topic that I reserved for, for another day. So I think I maybe se puede I went a little bit over in una time, de that's what I have. Agua, we have time de agua for, for discussion. Eh, que and I see preguntas. there's some things in chat. Y estoy que hay um, en el chat. And Sam is giving orders in that chat. Eh, no, I think we're good. Uh, we're just, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. Eh, so there's no have... questions in chat yet. So, okay. Good. No, I, th I think we're good. I was just, I have to... Um, Entiendo que estamos pasando a la fase de preguntas. Eh, primero agradecer a Graham y, y a Samuel por la traducción de esta Graham, interesante presentación. Um, we're requesting for questions. Yo no sé si hay preguntas por parte de alguien. Okay. So si quieren poner sus preguntas, pongan sus preguntas Sam. en el chat para que se las hagan a Graham Pop. Y si la presentación va a quedar en eh, grabada, eh, se grabó ahorita para eh, después eh, ponerla en YouTube. Sí, sí. Oye, Sam, eh, una ah, pregunta así como para iniciar la, la, la conversación. Una pregunta. Mira, la conversación. Sí, mira eh, entendiendo que, que los recursos pueden ser limitados y, y, y uno no, 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 no tiene la posibilidad de, de perforar en, en muchos sectores, eh, ¿Cuáles podrían ser los criterios eh, que nos permitan elegir eh, las fuentes o los, o los puntos de monitoreo que representen adecuadamente eh, un acuífero? ¿Ya? Eh, ah. No lo sé, eh, ¿a qué radio tienen que estar separados? ¿Cuáles son las características de estos pozos? ¿Pueden ser pozos que se explotan constantemente o solo destinados al monitoreo? Si nos, puedes comentar, si nos pudiesen uh -huh. comentar algo al respecto. Uh 
Uh, so, uh, Graham, they are asking, so, considering that there are not uh, unlimited financial resources, uh, what will be the criteria or the characteristics to install this monitoring well um, that can help us to represent the aquifer? Do, do you know, can you provide any guidance on where to put these monitoring wells and what will be the characteristics of those monitoring wells in a basin? I think in, in most cases, we can use existing wells. So, um, and that's what we have done. There's lots of wells out there. Wells are expensive to drill. So I'm thinking in most cases, in a basin, you, you already have wells and one can use those, those wells. Sometimes you don't have enough access into the well bore to install the equipment. <clears throat> If you, you drill, your, if you drill wells specifically for monitoring, um, the data can be higher quality. But it's difficult to drill the hundreds of wells one might like um, because of the cost. But in terms of placement, um, it depends on the aquifer structure and its photography. Where are the major aquifers and aquitards? Están los mayores, the eh, o los acuíferos y acuitardos so eh, más importantes. Ah, ahí sí depende. Uh -huh. I have a question in chat from yeah. Felipe Gar Garcia. I'm looking for a face there. I don't see it yet. Felipe asks. Um, okay, aquí mira Sam. Hay otra pregunta de Felipe Garcia. Nos dice, bueno, la, la, la redacción en inglés, pero dice, además del, del monitoreo constante de los acuíferos, tenemos la, la infraestructura para, efectiva para encontrar el, el agua. ¿Contamos con esa infraestructura? Sí. Absolutamente. Eso es verdad. No entré en eso. En California, están buscando dos formas de recargar el agua. One way is called AGMAR, and my colleague mm. Alan Dalka and others at UC Davis Perdón, have done a lot of problema. work on that. Tenemos that un involves using eso, farmlands que es, que es to do basically eh, fallow season irrigation en, to eh, accomplish research. Cultivo, and in some settings, in some crops, it looks like this is very promising. The es, other approach lugares, of, eh, of recharging geologically um, opportune locations that also have really good soils for recharge. <clears throat> That's something muy, muy that uh, is being done some, but not enough. And uh, we're, we're trying to develop the, the hydrogeologic data to Ajá, support este those, caso, those kinds of decisions. That is where are the best eh, places eh, to put water para to ver achieve dónde high infiltration rates. Eh, mm -hmm. The other part of infrastructure that I think Felipe may be referring to would be the, the, um, the canals. So, um, let me... Uh, oh, did it stop sharing? I think it did. Sí. Let me, let me go back to uh, I think I have to turn on sharing again. If we go back to one of my slides, you can see this now. Um, in, in this basin, we, there's something here called Folsom South Canal. There's, there's already a canal that diverts water from the biggest river, the American River, into the basin. So in many basins in California, there's not enough infrastructure like this to move the water from the surface water sources to where you might want to put it for, for recharge. This canal was not built for groundwater recharge, but it is underutilized. Este puede, este canal so, but, yes, para this is a problem in, in California. There's a lot of uh, interest and in debate and effort on funding infrastructure, para and especially water conveyance structures, to move water to places where you can recharge it. 
part of the problem with that right now is people don't know exactly where they want to recharge. So how, where to build the conveyance is, is still, um, that's still developing. There's still questions about it. So this is part of the problem with flood marks. With the surface reservoir, you build a dam, politicians cut the ribbon and say, there it is, take it. Politicia, la, los Simple. políticos les gusta Relatively, cortar el expensive. moñito rojo. Con flood mar, es mucho más expensivo, mucho, mucho más expensivo. Si lo hacemos en, de esta forma, But con you, recarga de do many agua, eh, make it work. De, you've got to secure the water rights. Eh, recarga de agua de inundaciones, um, tienes que hacer mucho esfuerzo. En California, they've made tienes que hacer mucho esfuerzo. You need to um, get the conveyance to move the water to where you want it. You need to decide where are you going to put the water. And then it's also important to be able to monitor the consequences of that recharge and, and the building. So there is infrastructure that needs to be developed. Still, if you look at the cost of doing all those things, the cost is much, much less than building and maintaining a major dam. Much less. But, it's, but it involves a network of people. Pero lo so in que California, tener una red de there's a lot of effort to create flood mar networks muchos, of stakeholders, and the hope is that these, will, these people will come together and, uh, with these networks and create the necessary cooperation to make a flood mar network. So, my chat window went away. There it is. Ah, lo entendemos que una combinación de infraestructura y, y de gestión, de acuerdo. Oye, aquí hay otra pregunta de eh, Joaquín Mesa que, que señala de una, más una pregunta más técnica sobre la diapositiva 26. Que los pesómetros más profundos miden menos presión hidráulica que los que lo, que lo poco profundos. Uh -huh. So uh, 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 there is a more technical question, and I think it's in slide 26. Um, uh, Matías, ¿me podrías repetir la pregunta? Es que no la veo en el chat. So, um, uh, Graham, I think yes. they are asking if you can go to slide 26. So there is a more technical question. Okay. And I think the technical question was related with groundwater levels. Uh, Matías, ¿me podrías repetir la pregunta? Okay. Matías, ¿me podría repetir? La, pre, la diapositiva 26 nos preguntan por qué los, los pozos más 26, profundos tienen menos the, presión hidráulica que los poco profundos. Why the deeper well, why the deeper wells has less uh, water pressure or pressure than the shallow well? Mm -hmm. Hang on, I think I lost my share. Espérame. When I when I click Pero, out espérame. of um, es que perdí como compartir the uh, presentation mode, it's it's losing my my share. So let me just get back to Zoom and reshare that screen. And I think um, Joaquin is referring to this slide. Yes. Yeah. So these are heads, not pressure. The printer is not working unless I put it in presentation mode. So here we go. So um, why are these lower? This is a, a deeper okay. part of the aquifer system. Uh, okay. We're not seeing your this. Hay, hay otra pregunta también. Um, yeah. Javier, your, like, que responde a, a si right. el, Hang on. La, la que tenemos acá. Si el, mm. los datos mensuales son... Okay. del modelo son, son buenos como para la planificación en el largo plazo uh -huh. quizá apuntando a no sé, se necesita con mayor yeah. mayor periodicidad so, so uh, after we finish this question uh, Javier is asking if uh, monthly, the estimates of monthly uh, water storage uh, are those um, is the temporal scale good enough to do some water planning so let's get first one this and then 
So, um, while getting this question, you know, why are these water levels deeper than the water table? This is because um, these wells, these piezometers that are, are deeper, which represents these down here. So, uh, these points represent relative depth in the system. It's a sedimentary aquifer system, and there are confining beds. It's all semi confined. So, these the change in storage here um, for a given change in head is proportional to the specific storage. So I'm giving you a technical answer. The change in storage here at the water table for a given change in head is proportional to the specific yield. This is unconfined. These represent semi-confined parts of the system. Just give me a second here. <laughs> Lo que dice es que eh, la relación que existe entre el cambio de almacenamiento en los eh, acuíferos semiprofundos y profundos es una relación mayor cuando existe eh, el cambio de elevación. En el acuífero somero, como es un acuífero mundial, no existe esta relación, eh, esta relación no es tan eh, pronunciada. Uh, sorry, now we're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it has to do okay, with the difference. Sam. La otra pregunta que te había hecho, me había adelantado un poco la respuesta, era si, si en el modelado de agua subterránea, the other, el, el modelo uh, mensual eh, the, es suficientemente bueno para uh -huh. una planificación so en el mediano o largo plazo. Es necesario quizá discretizar un poco más la información. Uh -huh. Is it yeah. the Apunta a eso. Is it good enough pregunta. for water management or do we have to discretize the modeling? That, that, that was the first question, remember, about the time step. If the amount yes. of time step for doing yeah. groundwater management, if that is um, adequate or not or not. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Let me just finish one more question. thing I wanted to say about ah, this. El, and I'll come back to that. That. But here, I think people make the mistake of thinking all groundwater level measurements represent the water table. If they did, life would be simple. <laughs> Uh -huh. My point in showing this is that in most cases, the deeper water level measurements represent not the water table. So, uh -huh. and that's what makes the calculation of change in storage a little more complicated. That's why we have groundwater models, or it should be why. So, but back to the excellent question also, um, is a monthly time step enough? I think it probably is. I think in most cases, um, you don't need daily, but a weekly or monthly time step in terms of knowing the change in storage would be enough. Right now, in California, supposedly a very progressive place, we don't know the change in groundwater storage on a monthly or weekly time period anywhere. We don't. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. We could, if we focus on that, and if we focus on it enough to make those numbers really good, again, I think we would make groundwater management much more transparent and successful. Thanks, Graham. Ok. Sam, eh, hay otra pregunta. Dice desde la región de la Araucanía, Patricia Espinosa. Pregunta, ¿cómo podríamos en Chile fortalecer a los comités locales para el adecuado funcionamiento y organización en la administración del agua rural? Uh, so, how, how can we uh, help the local communities to um, uh, support or to provide them good tools to do local groundwater management. How can we support uh, local people to do local water, local groundwater management in rural communities? Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, yo creo. that's another good question. Uh, es una muy buena pregunta. <laughs> I think there's many different ways. Existen but one way formas, is formas. to engage the local es, people um, in the monitoring. Con la gente local For example, en el monitoreo, por ejemplo, in that basin where we did the um, 
the um, groundwater the, observatory when citizens learned that they could have a transducer in their well that recorded their water level, there were two different reactions. Some people said, no way. Keep your equipment out of my well. They were suspicious of data that might come out on their well. But a lot of other people wanted their well to be monitored. Mm. So what I saw happening in those cases was a citizen science type of initiative or um, crowdsourcing. So once you create one of these networks, local people who have wells may become interested in being part of it. And, and then the they can see se puede hacer una what red their groundwater de levels are doing and what the groundwater de levels de around de them de are doing. The other thing is that um, building a, a groundwater más, model in a monitoring network requires regional cooperation. Uh -huh. red, eh, so there needs to be some kind of support. Requiere, in, in California, the state is trying apoyo. to do this y by creating integrated water management Están tratando de hacer esta, mm -hmm. este apoyo And the purpose of an integrated este water management district, and Sam can probably say much more about these, uh -huh. is to create a platform or a forum for people to um, to build, okay. to build data. Oh, no. <laughs> to build databases. And then to build models. Building the models also requires regional data and it requires some money. But it, and people say, well, it's expensive. It's expensive to build a model. But I suggest we we'll compare that to the expense of building a major dam and doing the annual maintenance may seem large at first, but compared to the cost of impounding the surface water and maintaining dams and conveyances, it's not so big. Okay. Isadora? Isadora, any other questions? Okay, thank you. There's another question. Eh, precisamente respecto a cuáles eran las plataformas que utilizan en California para poder monitorear el agua subterránea regional. Monitor to regional, to monitor regional eh, groundwater and casting and a lot of the other. They are asking for what are the platforms to monitor groundwater. Um, in California, mm -hmm. Sam, I think you just mentioned CASGEM. Uh, I see. Yep. So, CASGEM is one, right now it's not very advanced. It does not use wireless sensor networks. CASGEM largely involves human beings visiting each well maybe two or three or four times a year um, and measuring water levels manually. So, um, and this is something that I've been pushing in California is is automating um, the groundwater monitoring, it will be cheaper than paying someone to visit each of these wells two or four times a year, and you would get continuous data. Once you get continuous water level data, then you have more of that opportunity for quicker feedback on the state of the groundwater system. But besides CASGEM in California, there's not much else. I would no, say no in California, we have under-invested in, in groundwater information no infrastructure. No and in California eh, right now is trying to catch up. There no are no other states in the U.S. that have been more progressive on uh, monitoring groundwater and subterrán. serving the information to y el, anyone who needs it. Estos a toda la gente que la Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eh, además tenemos una pregunta referente a esta oh, misma sense. lámina que se muestra, We que dice Álvaro, independiente de la today, pregunta de Joaquín, like eh, así sea, ¿cuál es la diferencia, so, o sea, con la diferencia de las presiones? 
significa see, más o menos interacción entre las capas de acuíferos. Sorry, so, when, when you have that variation, that greater, no, the, the uh, slide that you had before, that one. So, yeah. um, ¿puedo repetir la pregunta? Uh, sí. Independiente de lo que preguntaba Joaquín, eh, ¿existe question. mayor o menor interacción entre las capas de acuífero con la is diferencia there, de las mediciones? Is there, a, a, is there more or less uh, interaction between the aquifers that you're seeing there? Um, because of the change in the uh, water levels. So the change in the water levels shows greater or less interaction between the aquifers in this is like ah yeah so some people look at this and say well this part of the aquifer is not connected to that no es no está conectada con that's not correct they are connected but just on a different time scale so you'll notice that uh, you know, the water table goes up and down like the deeper water levels also go up and down so one of the reasons the deeper water levels go up is they're being recharged by the shallow water table aquifer. So the whole system is leaky. We call this leaky. But on a time scale of you know, six months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And in, in some of these cases, um, the deeper water levels recover during the wet season back to levels that are close to the water table. In this case, these go higher. And the vertical gradients reverse from downward to upward. But there's other cases where um, during the wet season, the water table elevation becomes very similar to these water levels. But the whole, the, you know, people often think, oh, this means they're not connected, but that's not true. They're just connected hydrodynamically on a bit longer time scale, six months to a year. Another one that went well. <laughs> eh, otra pregunta, or I, ya estamos bien, are we good? Eh, ok, queda la última pregunta. Sí. Las burlas que la está haciendo um, Denise Dujalde. Dice Denise. que muchas gracias y que está con Thanks estudiantes so del curso de, eh, ambiental de la Universidad de La Serena y dice que es un gran problema en la región la escasez de ah. agua. Entonces, sobre la recarga, ¿podría decirnos un índice de recarga de agua subterránea eh, aproximado en áreas como el Valle Central de Chile? Uh -huh. So, she's, a, she, she's from the Serena, she's a student, and she's thinking about if there is an indicator or an index eh, of groundwater eh, for the Central Valley. Do we have any index uh, or indicator, regional indicator? Indicator of the state uh -huh. the system or depletion of the, of the state of the system i would say no well yeah, no the, the only indicator, indicator is the department of water resources collects regional information on water levels and they they can usually give you changes in groundwater levels on an annual time scale or maybe a five-year time scale and uh, you know, so you can you can look at whether the trends are, are up or down si los, eh, and that's helpful um, but I, I'm suggesting that we can do much more with the water level data que hacer mucho más con la we can translate it into changes in storage and then you could have indices that are much more informative. Okay, I think uh, that also went well. Um, uh, Isadora, Matias, Pablo, Javier, are we good? Estamos bien? Okay, ya no tenemos más preguntas, Sam. Okay, so uh, there are no more bueno, questions. Um, a reiterar el agradecimiento nuevamente a, a Graham, a Samuel, a los organizadores y a todos los que han participado de este seminario. Eh, muchas gracias por las la, la preguntas. Es bueno que, que en nuestra cuenca se, 
se desarrollen sí, sí. estas instancias y quizás sí, sí, sí. se extrapolen a otras cuencas. Teníamos sí. gente de la Araucanía, teníamos gente de la Serena, sí. donde nosotros también ahí tenemos Basin. participación como Aguas del Valle. Pero other, muchas gracias a todos Basin. por, por esta participación. Sí, en www.simi.info, según ver, señala Javier Carmay, eh, Camaño, podrán encontrar la grabación de este taller. Uh -huh. one, one other, uh, what were you saying, Graham? I just said thank you mm -hmm. for the excellent questions and sí, for, for inviting me to, to be with you virtually today. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so we're going to, vamos a postear el... Take care. Este, eh, vamos a postear el video en la página de CIM. Pablo, anyone else? Pablo, um, thanks everyone. All right. Muchas gracias. Thanks everyone. Uh, sorry, I had to be jumping. Uh, disculpen que tuve que estar entre un canal y el otro. Muchas gracias a todos. Gracias por participar. Uh, les pondremos el video en la página de CIMI. Uh, Graham, thanks so much. Muchas Thank gracias. You, you, know you know where to find me. Sí. Nos vemos. Muchas gracias. Thanks everyone. Gracias. Muchas gracias. 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 Felicitaciones. Hasta luego. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.